Hello, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity to present our work. I have no disclosures. GERD is a common condition with significant economic burden. While the pathophysiology is multifactorial with the crura, flat valve, and LES all working together to make up what we call the anti-reflux barrier, which help prevent reflux of gastric content that is otherwise favored by a positive abdomen to thoracic pressure gradient. While surgery, specifically fundopication, remains a standard surgical intervention for GERD, there are newer alternative endoscopic options such as RFA, TIF, and G-junction plication. However, some of these lack substantial long-term efficacy data and often require costly proprietary equipment. I will be talking about a new endoscopic anti-reflux intervention called the anti-reflux mucosectomy, or ARMS, which is an endoscopic mucosal resection around the G-junction also aimed at helping to recreate part of the anti-reflux barrier. The ARMS procedure was initially discovered incidentally when a patient received G-junction EMR for Barrett's, who later experienced improvement in GERD symptoms. Formally described in 2014, ARMS involves a hemicircumferential EMR of the gastrocardia around the G-junction, which leads to contraction and tightening of the LES, thought to improve reflux symptoms. As seen in the endoscopic images on the right from a pilot study, a reduction of flat valve was achieved at two to six months following the mucosal resection. However, given the inability to reduce or repair hiatal hernias, ARMS is limited to patients with hiatal hernias two centimeters or less. While there have been several case series that demonstrate a feasibility, safety, and short-term efficacy of this technique, few have examined the long-term clinical or quality of life outcomes in these patients. In looking at the potential mechanisms of ARMS, we have seen previously that it can result in contraction and tightening of the LES. And if we take a step back and look at Pozell's law of fluid dynamics as a simplified example, trans EG junction flow is directly proportional to EG junction radius and inversely proportional to the length of the narrowed segment and also the viscosity of the gas or liquid traversing the segment. Note that the radius is raised to the fourth power. So this is where you would get the greatest effect when trying to reduce flow or reflux through the G junction. And it's where arms can potentially help make a difference. Additionally, we know there's transient LES relaxation that plays an important role in reflux, as demonstrated by this complex pathway mediated by the vagal system through the dorsal motor nucleus. We also think by resecting the mucosa during arms, we could potentially disrupt this pathway for transient LES relaxation as another mechanism for reflux control. And we think this because there's previous animal studies on RFA that have demonstrated that radial frequency energy delivered to the gastrocardia reduced the frequency of transient LES relaxation as well as acid reflux episodes and esophageal acid exposure. In this study, we aim to compare clinical and quality of life outcomes of patients who underwent ARMS to patients who underwent laparoscopic Nissen fund applications, but were traditional can candidates for ARMS based on their clinical criteria. We hypothesized that patients who had ARMS had better perioperative outcomes and also similar long-term quality of outcomes compared to patients who underwent Nissen's. We queried a prospectively maintained quality database from a single institution in addition to clinical outcomes, we evaluated quality of life outcomes using validated surveys, which were collected at pre-op, then three weeks, six months, one year, and two years post-op. Just looking at the results for patients who had ARMS, we had a total of 33 patients who underwent ARMS, all of which were technically successful with operating time less than an hour, and all patients dis discharged on the same day. There was one intraoperative complication of a partial thickness injury, which was closed with endoscopic sutures. 90% of patients reported symptomatic improvement postoperatively and were able to discontinue PPIs after six weeks. However, there were three patients who reported significant dysphagia requiring endoscopic dilation and 10 patients who had persistent or recurrent reflux symptoms that ultimately required a second anti-reflux operation. We identified 67 patients who underwent Nissen from our database that were appropriate for comparison, meaning those patients that would have been candidates for ARMS based on their clinical criteria. There were no significant differences between the two groups in terms of sex, age, BMI, smoking status, or preoperative comorbidities. 
the majority of the patients in ARMS group had no hiatal hernias or hiatal hernias less than one centimeter, while the majority of the patients in the Nissen group had a two centimeter hiatal, hiatal hernia, again, reflecting our matching criteria. In terms of postoperative recovery, the ARMS cohort has shorter OR time, less EBL, shorter length of stay, less pain of discharge, earlier discontinuation of, of narcotics, and sooner return to activities of daily living compared to the Nissen group. In terms of quality of life outcomes, we look at the reflux symptom index or RSI first. Now this is a validated instrument assessing atypical reflux symptoms with 13 being the cutoff representing significant reflux. Both patients went with Nissen and ARMS had a reduction of RSI scores post-op, but there were no significant differences between the two groups at any time points for up to two years postoperatively. In terms of GERD HRQL, which focuses more on typical reflux symptoms, similar to RSI scores, there was a reduction in GERD HRQL scores compared to pre-op, but no differences between the patients who underwent Nissen and ARMS at any time points postoperatively up to two years. Item number nine from GERD HRQL was analyzed separately to assess patient symptoms of gas and bloating. And we found patients who had Nissen actually reported more symptoms of gas bloat post-op compared to ARMS. And this difference persisted up to two years postoperatively. Both Nissen and ARMS groups reported increased dysphagia at three weeks post-op compared to pre-op, but this does not persist at six months, one year, or two years on follow-up. Again, there were no difference in terms of dysphagia score between the two groups. Finally, there are some limitations of our study we must acknowledge. This is a retrospective study, and, the and there's voluntary nature of the quality of life surveys, as well as limited sample size with skewed objective follow-up data, which may have biased our results. In conclusion, ARMS is a safe and effective endoscopic intervention for GERD without limiting future anti-reflux interventions and leads to improved postoperative recovery with similar reflux control and quality of life outcomes when we compare to Nissen from the vacation. By utilizing endoscopic techniques already familiar to surgical endoscopists and without the need for specialized equipment while potentially targeting multiple anti-reflux mechanisms, ARMS has the potential to become the standard endoscopic intervention in an appropriately selected group of patients. Thank you.